Hello and welcome to the show. I am back on BeamNG Drive taking more of your automation cars around the autocross course. We start with a car from Glitch. This is the Ultrabird Silhouette. It is an all-wheel drive V12 turbocharged V12 powered vehicle. 516 horsepower in this 350 torque. It is a tad heavier than some cars at 1,100 kilos. It's a pretty good power-to-weight ratio. It's also got massive wheels, which is a concern. Not only have we got massive wheels, we've got full we've got push rod suspension at the rear. I have a horrible feeling we are going to have wheel wobble again. <laughs> I just get the feeling that wheel wobble is going to be a thing. Oh, we've got tiny gear ratios and no ABS. Okay, that's things to do deal with a horrendous gear ratios. Uh, oh, and the brakes are so sharp that they lock up constantly. Ah, uh, we haven't had one of these for a while. It's been a little while since we've had an incessant lock-up mobile. Uh, four? No, we're going to have to go... I think we have to go third out of every corner. Annoyingly, it's third out of the corner and then almost immediately change to fourth. It's, if we stick it in fourth, though, we run... I have the difficulty of trying to get the car actually well going it, it struggles a little bit perhaps from fourth i'll have to have a i'll have to kind of experiment a little bit uh the brakes are a real difficult thing to to work with i think it's the problem with these horrendous race brakes is that uh when you don't have them with abs they are so sharp that locking up is a massive massive problem I mean, you could see how much oh god we've got a little bit of frame rate lag in an awkward place there. You can see how little brake pressure I'm using. I've got the pedal gauge on so you can see and that's just not a normal thing that I'm used to having to deal with. Uh, it's also a tad oversteery uh, rear wheel driver. The front end actually does get turned in very very well and I will say there is no wheel wobble as such with this car. Uh, the front end is very well behaved. It's 25.6 for a first run. There were a lot of issues though. I mean statistically speaking it looks like a very very quick car. But I think, I think a lot of those issues are going to really hamper it in terms of, in terms of ultimate speed. Essentially, I'm going to have to be worrying about a lot of things. That third gear is really funky. Uh, let's just try fourth out of everywhere. I mean, it should minimise the need for us to upshift out of these courts. It, it's like either you're going to lose a little bit of time with being slightly different place in the gears, or you're going to lose a little time. Uh, either changing gear or fighting around with the car as it gets oversteer. And but <laughs> there's no good way to do it when it's at that particular point. There's our insanely short gear ratios. The <laughs> I got used to having cars that could actually stop vaguely sensibly. This is... it's it's not good. It's, it's not good whatsoever. I, mean, I think this might have some of the most powerful brakes we've seen it with the locking up issues. They are immense. They are absolutely immense. The car is very, very good at slowing down. But but there are a lot of issues trying to get it to slow down. What is our straight line speed looking like? Oh, it does wander a little bit down the straight. It's, yeah, it's, it's good. It's good, but the problem is I don't have the control to stop it because it just locks up. You breathe on the brake pedal and it has all sorts of... It. I, would, I was kind of expecting problems. I was kind of expecting problems with this car in some ways. These weren't particularly the problems that I that I was expecting. And there we go, it's another 25. Oh, we killed a uh, rear tyre. If I get everything right, maybe a 23. But trying to get everything right in this car within three runs is not going to be easy. It's... Kind of a case of at the moment, I'm going to be better off almost going slower, uh, because if I if I'm going slower and I deal with the brakes properly, I shouldn't have the big time wasting sections where I basically come to a stop because I've got to try and fight with it all locked up. And it's, either way, it's you know potentially losing a little bit of time, but <laughs> I think that's going to be the way to go. This is the final run with the car. Uh, we are going to go not sideways there, like through here. It's really really nice. I just can't. I can't really push to find what the limits of the car are because I've got to worry so much about how the hell am I going to get the car stopped. I'm basically thinking all about how I'm stopping the car here. The rest of it is just kind of instinct and 
yeah, I'm not really learning how much speed I can get out of the car because I've just got to focus solely on what can I do with the brakes. How am I going to stop it? How am I going to not get wheel spin or kind of wiggling down this straight? We are good this time around. Early on the brakes. It, I mean, it's got the braking performance to do that later, but I need to be able to control it, so we will go a tad earlier. We have got it stopped. I think it's still up towards a 90 mile an hour mark. It's very, very quick. Very, very quick indeed, this car. As we now head through the final couple of corners. Run towards the line. Oh, it's even better than I thought it was going to be. 22 <laughs> 3. I mean, I, there, is, there is more speed in that car if the brakes worked sensibly. If the brakes worked sensibly, if there was, you know, a, a decent, a usual, a, a helpful amount of brake pressure that could be used, that would be quicker. 22 3, though, considering the difficulties in, in getting this car stopped is not bad whatsoever. So I'm hoping for less brake issues with our next car. This from Tiger Haze. It is the Schotzer RR. All-wheel drive, naturally aspirated, flat six in this one. 280 horsepower, just shy of 200 torque, but it is pretty light. It's just 802 kilos. Lightweight cars, pretty good when it comes to tackling this circuit, although Perhaps the power, the power to weight ratio on this is not bad, but we have seen cars with three, four hundred horsepower with this sort of weight and still being controllable. We might not see it quite at the very tippy top of the leaderboard. Christ, it's noisy. Uh, <laughs> however, I'm thinking it's going to be a pretty solid. Ooh, I say that. There's a lot of understeer through that sort of first. I say there's a lot of understeer. It might also be partly because I was used to driving that previous car that was very, very good. The previous car was very good indeed at getting turned in. It was a shame about the rest of it. Sometimes that's a, a difficult thing to have to try and, and you sort of go between two different vehicles. Uh, are we going to... Yeah, we're nice and controlled. Nice enough and controlled. We are struggling a little bit, perhaps, for the front end ground. I'm just looking... <laughs> so you're trying to figure out the speeds. Again, I've talked about this before. Sometimes when you have a very, very fast car, it feels like it's horrendous because you're carrying, you're actually approaching a corner with a lot more speed, so it feels like it's understeering terribly, uh, when it's actually just that you've thrown it into the corner with a lot more speed because the car is capable of more. It's a strange thing. Maybe not so much on a normal racetrack, but certainly around this sort of place, you can have that kind of thing happen. Christ, the noise. The noise from this is incredible. Uh, the top speed is actually really good for a sub... Uh, whatever it was, horsepower car, sub... Uh, 300 horsepower car. That is pretty damn good top speed. That's going to be 90 miles an hour down there. Uh, we are going to wiggle and weave our way towards the line. Yeah, it's a little bit wonky in a couple of places while I figured out what I could and couldn't do with the vehicle. It is nice to drive though. A touch understeery. I think that will potentially hamper it when it comes to the so it's like this first section. This first section here is where the car's gonna lose. It's gonna lose time. Gear ratios are lovely. It's so nice to have a car that second gear works out these hairpins. It's normally second gear, depending on depending on the vehicle. But second gear, an excellent gear to get out of the hairpins. You know, accelerate. We don't have to go to third, and then we're stopping again for the next corner. And that's what I like. That's what I, that's what you kind of want from <laughs> from a car if you can get it. Now up to all through these fast. First corners, too wide, too wide for me. Now, you can kind of get away a little bit. Uh, you can get away with running a little bit wide. That was way too wide. It does not have... We have been seeing the sort of the quick cars, while the speedo is ever so slightly inconsistent. Oh, I actually got even one fast enough out of that turn there. Uh, it's measuring wheel speed, the one that we have on here. I can't actually put the airspeed indicator on because this is a time trial. The... The indicator was reading in about 38 miles an hour, and we were struggling to turn. And we've seen cars 41, 42 through there be perfectly okay at getting turned there. So there is definitely perhaps a little lack of of grip, of front end grip. I'm perhaps slightly surprised by by that because uh, yeah, we we are struggling a touch with the old understeer getting the car around here. Oh, I very nearly had a wiggle into the wall. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> went really badly wrong. That nearly went really badly wrong. I think 22 is, is going to be doable, but it is going to have to be 
you know, spot on. There's no no margin for error with this car here. As yeah, to do that, I've got to wait so long to get on the power. It's actually a bit of oversteer there, which I could have done, could have done without. It's going to cost us a smidge of time. Hopefully, we can be neater everywhere else and still get away with it. Come on, it's, it's that way. That's what's killing it. Acceleration is actually very, very good. I, I feared that this might be a little bit underpowered. We're only talking fractionally here, but I, I feared it might be a little underpowered down the straights. But as it is, no, it's got more than enough acceleration. It's the it's that lack of corner grip, I think, that is going to going to, to, to do the car in, if you like. Trying to... Now, we can, of course, make the most of some of these exits here. We could run wider. We don't have to worry about kind of keeping the car uh, nice and tight. You can get away with getting on the power a little earlier. Uh, the hair, like, the onto the straight, that's an really interesting one. Like, you don't want to run too wide. There is a lot of this runoff area. You don't want to run too wide. Otherwise, you actually have a right fat getting it back in in time for the bridge part. Or... <laughs> I don't, think it's got the, I don't think it's got the best brakes. It's, it's quick down the straights. It's not quite stopping as comfortably as I would perhaps expect the car to, which does. It is also does ever so slightly lock up, even with the ABS. It's just, yeah, there, there are little things that just hamper it from being, you know, an absolute fastest car. We are into the 22s. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. There are a couple of things. The brakes are a little scary in places, whether it be with lockups or whether it be perhaps not as powerful as you might expect and the understeer kills it but still again okay, still a good time into the 22s into the 22s is not bad whatsoever up next we have got a very mighty wing <laughs> it's a very mighty wing indeed this car from michael c486 is called the acedro city all-wheel drive turbo v6 in this interestingly got a four-speed gearbox hopefully the gear ratios are good in this, uh, 477 horsepower, just over 300 torque, it weighs just 895 kilos. That is a big power to weight ratio. There are some massive tyres, so let's hope we don't have terrible wheel wobble. It's, yeah, potentially going to be very, very quick. Short wheelbase, although high centre of mass could be a concern. There is, yeah, potential for a very, very quick car in this. Uh, and I spot a little bit of wheel wobble. Oh, we've got brake issues, I think. I think we've got... Oh, the wings come off! <laughs> I think we've got wheel wheel wobble-related ABS issues here. That very much looked like it down towards the first corner. Basically, when the wheels start vibrating, uh, the ABS... Well, the wheels are vibrating because of the acceleration, and as I get off the accelerator to go on the brakes, the wheels are still vibrating a little bit. The ABS freaks out, and the car just doesn't slow down. The ABS doesn't know what to do because the wheels are uh, shaking around. Uh, it's not the worst we have seen, and I might... Now that I roughly know what I'm doing, I've also tweaked the steering. It's not been a great first run. Uh, yeah, that there. You just well, you, you can kind of see it more being transferred through the bodywork as to what it's doing, when, especially when it's sliding around. Because I vaguely know... I might know how to stop it, essentially. I might know how to stop it, so I might know what I can do to... to help to try and rectify the braking issues. There's actually so much power and not a huge amount of grip. Oh, uh, I'm having issues putting all that power down for the straight. Although this, this, the tweaked steering isn't going to help with that. And we are going to have another fairly sizable stop. The problem is once I know that we've got brake issues, it's always really scary. And how do you get stopped into some of these bigger braking zones? And there we are. It's across the line. It's a 23-4. There is more to come from that car. There is absolutely more to come from that car. If, and it is a fairly sizable if, if I can get everything to behave itself. Here we go. We are, I mean, that's better down to the first. I might just have to accept that we will be a little bit, just be a little cautious into the first corner. That's one of the worst places for the, for the wheel wall, essentially, because you've just launched it off the line. You've launched these sometimes very, very powerful, I mean, in this case, yeah, a very, very powerful car off the line, and even the all-wheel drive, the, uh, <laughs> the wheels are so tyres are so massive it causes the wheels to, to judder as you launch it. Out of these corners you got the car up to a little bit of speed, it's not so bad. It is pretty good turning from the car. Like Handling wise, if we ignore the <laughs> if we ignore the potential very, very big, scary problem handling wise, pretty solid actually. A good amount of turning, very very good acceleration, brakes feel when they are working feel pretty good. Actually not even warming up the front brakes, that probably won't help matters we are just about starting to now, but here we go. 
is this wing going to actually fit through here at full? Yes, it does. <laughs> it does. It does fit through there. It's a little bit sketchy. It's a little bit sketchy. I'm wondering if we are going to see a wing too. Well, we had some pretty. I mean, this is perhaps the mightiest standard wing. We've had much, much bigger wings that have been. Well, I mean, like the rooftop table. Oh, that got a wiggle across the line. <laughs> It's not easy feeding it through that narrow section. We are sub-20, though, with the car, which is nice. Not sure we're going to see it in the 17s, though. I'm not sure we're going to see it into the 17s if it wants to challenge towards the towards the front. Um, I mean, I, I have slightly less confidence in the car after the first run. It ha was better that last time around. We didn't. We didn't have any issues, but I know if you go, if you kind of go full, full at it now, that's when I'm going to screw up the final run. So we're going to have to take it with a modicum of caution whilst it, it's very difficult taking a modicum of caution while, of course, still trying to go really, very, very fast. And this car is capable of very, very high speeds. And slow it down again for this next turn. The gearbox is good, I will say that. I was curious about how the four speed was going to work in this. They've got the gearbox very, very nice. It's kind of what you want. There's a gear with power in it out of most of these corners. I mean, nobody's, tr nobody else has really tried it outside of a few sort of, um, I say more silly car, but out of outside of some more obscure vehicles, everyone's gone for six, seven speed gearboxes. Where you don't actually need to do that. For is a clever idea because a four-speed gearbox will actually be lighter in the car. So we're not using. We don't need more than four gears. I'm pretty sure I just brushed the wing against the uh, against the post there. Yeah, don't need more than four gears if they're tuned right. So it's a clever idea. A clever idea that so far anyway, not more people have gone for. There we go. An 18.8 is a better run. It's a very quick car. It's a very quick car. I just don't trust the brakes well enough on that to really be able to go for it. Certainly not within the three runs that I have. Still, though, <laughs> getting into the 18s is is damn good going. That makes for a, yeah, very, very quick vehicle. Well, we stick with the Mighty Wing theme for our final vehicle. This comes from Vinegar It Toyota. Uh, <laughs> this is called the Yo Yotota Reyes. It's essentially a play on the Toyota Yaris. Uh, we've got pink wheels, a big wing, a peculiar front end. Uh, Engine-wise, it is a naturally aspirated flat four in here. Another all-wheel drive, 268 horsepower, 187 torque. It isn't the most powerful or the torquiest. It's fairly light, uh, 948 kilos. It's certainly not the lightest, but under a thousand kilos is generally doing pretty well. I'm hoping we can have a car without terrifying brakes or terrifying understeer. Uh, we will I mean, we'll quickly find out. Uh, we have got not terrifying understeer. It doesn't get turned in the best through these corners. I think we're going to see a fairly similar sort of issue as we had earlier on where it's just kind of a patience. It's a waiting game as you get to these corners. Gear ratios are good. We have got second gear out of these corners. Oh, <laughs> it's a little bit of sliding. Uh, yeah, second gear is good out of these corners. It's nice throttle response. It's a, I mean, they are shorter gears than we have seen from some cars, but there's a, there's a gear in there that works for these corners, which is the important bit. I can be a little bit braver on the brakes down there. Yeah, we've got the same we've got the same understeer. That front end is not quite going to be able to change direction. And around here, when, you know, change of direction is, is very important, it's going to cost you time. It's potentially better than having a horrendously leery oversteery car where you can't go anywhere near the power whatsoever. But, uh, but basically, either way, there are problems. Straight line speed, eh, not too... I say not too, <laughs> I say not too shabby. Uh, and was then thinking all oh, the cars are a little bit down on, on horsepower. We have, we have had cars run that have only had 100 horsepower. Admittedly, the uh, super light happy bunny thing was very, very light. But uh, it's it's a little slower, but it's roughly in the ballpark. It is actually a pretty damn good <laughs> It's a very good run. 22.8. It's a very, very good run indeed for a first run. It might be a first... I mean, it's, it's not going to get sub-20. I would be fair. I mean, I'd have to have an unbelievable and just a ridiculously good run if I was to do that I would expect although sometimes those do happen yeah it's a pretty pretty 
good speed from the car. And <laughs> the understeer obviously not hampering it perhaps as much as I might have might have thought. This is what we, we have kind of been seeing that the five six hundred horsepower cars are so difficult to get them to work around here. It is you know it is very possible, and if they are very very well built, if they are very well set up. They can go unbelievably fast because they have just they've got the acceleration. They've got the acceleration to get out of the corners. Which a car like this, well, this is good, you know, don't get me wrong, this is good. This is good acceleration. It's not the same as some of the cars that we have seen, but this has got the composure. It's easy to drive this pretty damn quickly. It's easy to get this close to its limits. Whereas a lot of the real monsters, you know, the car the car we started today with. I'm spending more time having to try and figure out the brakes because they're locking up or the wheels wobble or something strange goes on with the terrifyingly quick cars or they just don't have the grip to go with all of the power that uh, yeah the sort of the 300 horsepower mark is kind of where you want the vehicles to be at it's you can get away with more if they are perfect but the 300 horsepower mark is is doing very well 300 horsepower fairly light I mean after all that's what I went for with the Kestrel, and that was a pretty damn good car <laughs> to a 20. <laughs> you know what, maybe I shouldn't have spoken so soon. That's a 20.7, that's ridiculously good. Like, statistic-wise, this this looks, you know, okay. I wasn't expecting that this sort of speed out of the car, perhaps. A good final run. Maybe we can see, I think it would be I think it would be pushing it to see a sub-20. We found a good chunk of time that I didn't quite expect to be able to find. And I don't know if we can find another near second, but I will give it a go. We will see what we can do with the car. Yeah, sometimes vehicles just, like, sometimes vehicles just surprise you. And this thing, it doesn't feel as quick. It doesn't feel like it's doing a 120. I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if it doesn't feel like it's doing it, if it is capable of, if it is going to be doing that sort of lap time. Uh, oh, I might push that a tad wide through there, which is not quite... I mean, we can get away... Like, that sort of wide there, you can just about get away with much wider than that, though, and then you are in in real trouble. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm liking this. I'm liking this car. Uh, <laughs> I've talked about it before. Sometimes vehicles that don't feel very quick are actually very fast. Sometimes cars that feel fast are uh, not going particularly fast. Uh, as long as it is going fast, as long as it's getting its lap speed, then I'm okay with it. Yeah, this doesn't feel like it's setting the setting massively fast times. It's somehow finding I'm not even sure where it's finding all of its speed, but it works. It works. It's consistent. Oh, we have actually got that one there. Or maybe just a fraction, tiny bit late on the brakes for the hairpin, but we got it around it and a run towards the line. <laughs> oh, it's a 26, 20.6. Sorry, almost went quicker on almost. Almost stuffed it up on that final run. I actually got very close to all a couple of places. Yeah, not not sure I can. Quite, I mean, a lot of runs, and I could probably get that into a into a sub twenty. But within the within the rule set that we have, it's still rolling as well after that finish. That's that is a real surprise. That is a real surprise. That works that works very very well. On to the results table, and we have a new entry in two of the top ten. The Cedro City will go into a seventh place. An 18.8, as I said, is a quick time, a very quick time around this circuit. It is still two seconds down on our current leader. That 17.0 is looking mighty, mighty impressive. Yeah, anything under 20 is going quick around here. Getting into the 18s is uh, yeah, very, very good going. For what wasn't the easiest of cars to drive, there was some scary braking moments, some wheel wheel wobble. So, <laughs> still, yeah, to, to have gone that fast, not bad going whatsoever. We do have to go a little bit further down to find our next vehicle. That will be down in a 23rd place, the Yotota uh, Reyes, a 20.6. It is a couple of tenths down on my Kestrel. It's, you know, in there with a crowded area of, of the table. It's only going to get busier as well. Sort of the, 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 low, the low 20s are going to get fairly crowded by the end of this series. I'm surprised. I'm, I am impressed very much by that, uh, that vehicle's performance. We then go a little bit further down. This is kind of 
prime mid-table area, if you like, vehicles that were quick but had their own, uh, own little issues. The Ultra Bird, while a lot of power and fast down the straights, far too difficult to get it slowed down. We'll go into a 36th place. It is half a second quicker than the, the Wing Special. That was a rear-wheel drive car. You know, the Wing Special is still holding up pretty well. I think the fastest rear-wheel drive car is a 21.8 or something like that. But, uh, yeah, they, the Wing Special is holding up. We then have the uh, the Schotzer that will be in a 39th place, a fraction slower than the Ultra Bird, a 22.9. Uh, yeah, still still good time, still as I said, sort of mid mid table area at the moment. But uh, yeah, there we go. That is that is going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, yeah, goodbye.